Welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome to episode 49 of the A Travel Talk Show, a podcast of A Canada Marketing Group and A Canada Travel.com. The A Travel Talk Show for you newbies out there, for you people who have been hiding in caves and haven't clued into this Canadian content broadcast. We happen every live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. PSD. From a secret of base camp, somewhere here in beautiful Maple Leaf back country of Canada. Big news, bro. Big news. Yes. Don't hear about it. Two days ago, I got an email in the morning. Yes. And it came to me and it said, Hey, you brothers of tourism, you guys running that A Canada gig going on there in deep backwoods Canada, we are going to recognize you on the Global Power Top. 100 influencer list Ooh, you know that what? Is so awesome i think they got in our green That's room a... and had some screech <laughs> i do i seriously i mean come yeah, on yeah, i know definitely. I, we do have quality guests and i think we do rock it out on a show and we do have fun and i'm um, i'm a big believer we could talk serious but you got tourism's about having fun and we can't lose sight of that well life's about having fun See, that's why I keep telling you, you're the smarter one. Yeah, well, you know, uh, you lead it into, you're three years smarter than me. We all know that. <laughs> three years, three months, get it right if you're going to quote the numbers <laughs> like that. Come on. Okay, we no, got that's a, such an you, awesome award. I mean, that's, yeah. and, I'm and still psyched at, about it. You look at the top 10 and it's like Surgeon Generals and all these people with all these degrees. And here we are, Backwoods Canada, brothers of tourism who love this country to death and the people who live here. And we love supporting the people who live here. And we love supporting people with Canadian Tong 10. And that brings us to our guest tonight, Matt. <sighs> Good old Matt. Matt is our guest. Today on our special guest is Ted o Ted X speaker, community builder, and executive coach to entrepreneurs, Mr. Matt Stewart. Matt, the bearded leader, the bewhiskered one, the brain yes. and the bristly will be on our show in a few minutes. But first, before we bring on the entrepreneur of entrepreneurs of entrepreneurs, Matt Stewart, we got to do our little pre-show housekeeping. So my name is Greg Dryer. If you haven't figured that one out yet, since my name's on the screen, I am the co-bro founder of the award-winning acanadatravel.com website and co-bro owner of the A Canada Marketing Group. Storyteller, adventure seeker on our award-winning blog called Two Brothers, Two Feet, Two Cures, Two Canadian. That's our blog. It's all about that. that and awesome. co-bro host with Mr. Good Looking next to me on the A Travel Talk Show. So I, this Thanks. is the time... When I need to pass the baton to the Cobro, hosting brother of brothers, Junior Gerard. Well, thanks, bro. I am the Cobro owner of acantravel.com, the co-host of this uh, A Travel Talk Show, which we're, is getting world-renowned recognition, followers from all over, which is simply awesome. Yeah. And I am keeper of the code, developer of the programs, and uh, mm -hmm. thrilled to be here with you bro i'm thrilled to be here but not as thrilled as i am to have matt stewart yeah yeah i mean if i lose you on this show because of internet issues that's fine i'm okay with it no. but <laughs> I, if i lose matt stewart i'm gonna you know that's not a cool thing well maybe you want to have matt as your brother instead i mean <laughs> obviously he, you want to trade him off it, take me i'm in you trade me away anytime here is he i'm telling you i love you to death but hey man <laughs> you, you ain't no Matt Stewart. Together, Thanks. we are the Thanks. brothers of tourism, probably made in the Canadian wilderness with 100% Canadian ingredients. We have That's Maple it. Leaf Red Blood flowing through our veins and a massive collection of bumps and bruises because we research Canada. We're boots on the ground research team. We are your sour toe cocktail, Newfoundland screech and Gimli Manitoba whiskey guzzling guinea pigs, wildlife whispers and bannock munching road tripping Canucks. And we're here with you tonight with Mr. Matt Stewart, Mr. Bearded Leader. This is a live show. So guess what, Call? What's that, bro? 
stuff happens. Yes. If we lose you mighty beautiful looking guests there that are here watching tonight, or, and if you do watch tomorrow, the recorded version, doesn't matter if we use the area, it's a recorded version, but if we lose you tonight, do change the channel. Keep yes. it right on this A Canada channel because we will be right back. We'll log back in. And if you lose our Mr. Bearded Leader, the bewhiskered one, do not worry. He will be right back as well. We'll just hold the show and he'll be right back. So don't change this channel. Our guest tonight works with entrepreneurs in many other sectors of the economy. In most cases, when we talk entrepreneurs, we are talking small business. That's our wheelhouse. And in Canada, small businesses make up 98% of all employer businesses. Not to mention, in our beloved tourism industry, 90%, just over 90% of businesses are small businesses. This man, Mr. Matt Stewart, works with those businesses. Now, we all know, Call, COVID-19 has devastated the entrepreneurial and small business market. But always look on the good side. The good news is that entrepreneurs are fighters. We aren't built mm -hmm. like other people. We are special. We are intuitive. We do not give up. We take challenges on and we look them straight in the face and we beat them with guidance, with mentors, with connections, and with teamwork. That is the beauty of being an entrepreneur. The challenges is opportunities yes. attitude. No matter what, as an entrepreneur, and I'm sure Mr. Matt Stewart will uh, will reinforce this because he's got some taglines of his own. We try to be optimistic. There's always a time to be realistic, and I get it. You got to be realistic, but realistic shouldn't be leading to bad thoughts or negativity. Mm -hmm. You've got to work with what you got, and listening to some of these stats is a little bit shocking, but. As you've been on this show many times, you have heard from our guests. And you know what? A lot of our guests call mm. have some wickedly positive stories coming out of this terrible, challenging time. Do they ever? Yeah. I mean, they, everybody's it, been forced with their challenges and, uh, I mean, rise to the occasion. Yes. Canadian. I, go ahead. No, I'm done. It's a Canadian thing. It is a Canadian thing. Canadian thing, and don't be I, pessimistic. That'll go take you in the wrong no, direction. No, no, and we're not big on that. And I, one thing about our guest tonight, Mr. Bearded Leader Matt Stewart, is he doesn't like excuses, and that just suits me fine. Yeah. I am an excuse exologist. I rid you of your excuses, and that's what we need <laughs> to do. We don't need to have that stuff. For, excuses doesn't provide any positive benefit, man. No, no. I mean, it's uh, none at all. No, but Secrets. go ahead. Yeah. But being realistic is you got to be a realistic, so then you can become optimistic. Know what you're playing with, and then become optimistic. So here's mm -hmm. something: close to one quarter of small businesses with one to nineteen employees. That's forty-two point two percent reported revenues were down forty percent or more year over year. But there's 58% that aren't reporting that. Nice. So why are we looking at the negative when I read stats? All I hear is negative, but I didn't hear anyone come out with 58% aren't recording over 48, 40% losses. But that's not how we're told this story. And I'm going to give you some more here. Close to half businesses with one to four employees, 47.2%. Around two-fifths of businesses with five to 19 employees, 43%. And over a third of businesses with 20 to 99 employees, 34% reported they did not have the ability to take on more debt. Okay? Mm -hmm. Every one of those, if it was reversed, would have been 60 to 75% have recorded no problem taking on more debt. But that's not how we're hearing it. Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's I just- I see where you're going. You see this? I, when I, I yeah. when I was reaching this show, researching this show so I look smart, I was looking at these <laughs> things and I said, this is the wrong way of telling the story. Yeah. Where's the success stories? The 75% that aren't afraid to take on debt. The 74% that aren't losing money. Where's that story? Where's the resilient story? You're definitely, I mean, that's a problem with most news. I mean, they don't tell the positive stories. I mean, you need to know, I'm with you, you need to know the the downsides what's happening and who's hurting and stuff but i mean you need to know the the positive the good stories the people that are you know mm -hmm. succeeding and 
-hmm. overcoming the and those are inspirational yep so i'm continuing my little research here about entrepreneurship who is in a lot of ways small businesses and i came across the thing and this is just blows me away six percent of businesses with one to four employees reported they were actually considering bankruptcy so that means 94 percent of the businesses out there aren't we're you know what that sounds <laughs> awesome right so where's the yeah. you know let's be realistic but why aren't we portraying this information optimistically why aren't we mm. saying why am i here not hearing the good news out there of the businesses that have changed their operating manual to accommodate COVID? what about the businesses like ours which have actually been doing extremely well with being innovative and changing the playbook where's these mm -hmm. stories mm -hmm. anyways we got a guess who's going to fill us in on all that <laughs> right yeah so it's time to call in the bearded leader we need some answers and we went out and we found this charismatic phenomenal gentleman fun to talk to and we just met him and we're already saying hey man let's hang out so i gotta <laughs> tell you this is pretty cool his name is matt stewart he likes to go by the bearded leader as every show we come up with our own little canadianisms so we want to keep our guests sharp so we're going to call him the be whiskered one so that's our little Canadian name. And Matt Stewart, to see what he has to say about the state of entrepreneurs, small business terms of the industry is really going to be interesting. Yes, I can't right. wait to hear. Well, let me tell you a little bit about our guest tonight before we bring him on the show. Matt Stewart is a three-time TEDx talk speaker. He's a success coach, leadership facilitator, author, community builder, and TEDx speaker, as I mentioned earlier. He is also a community cultivator he likes to call it a den mother which i would like to hear a little bit more about that and executive coach to entrepreneurs here's what you said in our little when we were sitting around the campfire in the green room having some screech we brought up the yes and of matt stewart mm. and he has a yes and approach has been developed over the past 20 years of his experience while coaching collaborating and advising senior leaders across north america and these senior leaders this ain't no uh uh roadside french fry stand these are big names here this guy has been working the work in the work making the connections and doing good for canadians in a variety of industries including healthcare global finance major international sporting events including and i know he's going to bring it up <laughs> who wouldn't the olympics paralympics pan am games and he does a little, little bit dabbles in some content creation which i really like to hear more about of that. Matt is an executive director of the not-for-profit Okanagan Society of Independent Filmmakers, OSIF, for you people who like to talk code. code. He is a winner <laughs> of the top 40 of 40. He has spoken, and I'm gonna say this over and over all night until you guys get it. This guy knows his stuff. He's been at two, three different TEDx talks. So what, here's the deal. We'd like you all, as we always do, to give out a loud and boisterous virtual hands together wag our beards in honor of matt stewart shake some hair if you don't have a beard and give mr stewart a big maple leaf round of applause and here we will bring him on and there he is mr matt stewart yeah, yeah, thank you thank welcome. you <laughs> welcome 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 cheers matt and uh how hey, cheers. is how is the bearded leader today? let me tell you something fierce greg and colin i want to thank you so much uh, it's, it's an honor uh to be here with you and uh, i'm just so humbled that you asked me to come uh on and i have to give a shout out i see in the chat uh gary big shout out to gary uh in the chat who's joined us as well who said hi so i have to definitely give him a shout out as well don't know him but uh big cheers uh to gary in the chat excellent excellent uh the nice thing about this show is we get a lot of views but you know what a lot of people are shy and mm -hmm. that's okay with that but we carrie's a regular viewer so on oh, awesome. carrie hey, she's Gary. from calgary and she comes on every week and uh we're glad to have her here to come on every week awesome. so matt let's get right to it because we're, we're gonna pick that yeah. brain of yours okay we're gonna and you know what we ask the tough questions here at the <laughs> Canada Talk Show. Yes, we do. We're tough investigative reporting. So, Matt, <laughs> we learned that you originally came from Hamilton, Ontario, which is a story in itself. And now you're living in the beautiful Okanagan Valley. 
for I'm guessing around you're going on five plus years, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So could you share with our audience, maybe uh, fill them in if they don't know the bearded leader and, and tell us a little bit about who is Matt Stewart? Sure. Okay. Uh, so we Matt just, Simple guy with beard and tattoos, uh, living living the life out here in in the Okanagan. Um, absolutely, just blessed with the life I have. Uh, I've got an opportunity to do some pretty amazing things. Uh, when I look back over the, I don't want to give away my age, but giving you know the back over how many years I've been around on this beautiful planet, spinning around the sun, I have an amazing opportunity to do some amazing things. Traveling across this country. Uh, you know, just like you've done has been probably the biggest highlight for me uh, as well. Uh, I had a great opportunity to live in New York City, lived in Tokyo for two years, lived in Ooh, Australia. Wow. And what I love about that is now to be able to come home. Uh, I really appreciate um, the the blessings that we have here in this country. Uh, so I am a someone who's battling cancer. I have an incurable form of leukemia, which is part of my story of why I left uh, downtown, living downtown Toronto, uh, living in Ontario, and we wanted to come back to the mountains uh, and, and just really live more of a simple life. And but since then, of course, it hasn't been simple. Um, so after I was diagnosed, one of the things I, I love sharing is, uh, you know, I went to a, that dark place. You know, were talking about no excuses and you know, yes and uh, because what do you do when someone tells you, you know, what you've got cancer and you know what? Guess by the way, sir there's no cure for it. There's no cure to oh. therapies. What do you do? Right? Yeah. I mean, I honestly, I'll, I'll be honest, I went and uh, being a true Canuck, I went and grabbed, I, I never I walked out of uh, the hospital at Princess Margaret downtown Toronto, went into a back alley, I bought a large, not a small, but a large bag of ketchup flavored Doritos. And I <laughs> of that bag because I was like, what does it matter? Right? Does yep. it really matter? Yeah. And I downed that whole bag. And I remember going back home and I was like, well, what do I do? Do I, you know, do I even go to work? Right? Like what, you know, what's the point? What's the purpose? Wow. Yep. And I started watching uh, because we had this channel on the TV and I was just flipping, you know, when you're, what are you going to do when you're not working? Right? Yep. And I binged for weeks on end this, channel called Ted. I'd never heard of it before. And nice. I was like, damn it. One day before I leave this earth, I'm going to stand on that red dot. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, oh. and, and, and I did it. But you know what, though? Here's the thing. And this is what I love about entrepreneurs, because the, the ability to have grit and resilience. Do you know how many Ted, Ted I applied to? 242. Yeah! Before I got my first acceptance letter from wow. a university in South Carolina, and they flew me down there, and it was the best experience. So I was like, I got to do this again. They flew me the next time to The Hague in the Netherlands. So I got to go to Europe right. on someone else's dime and give a TED talk. And then the most recent one uh, was awesome. I got down to go down to Florida, where I have family in Florida. And of course, you know, being a true, you know, from Ontario, my family all from Hamilton, they all came down. To, to Cocoa Beach, Florida, and got to do a TEDx there. So it, it just was a, an amazing no opportunity, not so much about the TEDx's, but for me to be able to go and say, hey, there was something I wanted to do. It was gonna be difficult. Public speaking is not the easiest thing. I mean, you guys are, are talented individuals at it, huh. but it was something I was like, you know what, before, you know, if I have to leave, I, I wanted to make sure that I, I got that off the bucket list. And so that I was just so blessed to be able to do that. And now uh, I get to live in one of the most beautiful places in Canada. And I think in the world, uh, if you haven't been to the Okanagan, it is something fierce. Mm -hmm. And every day I get to, you know, look out in the mountains on my drive to work now. And, uh, it, you know, even like coming down through the mountains um, and through the clouds to be able to get to, into the city, uh, you know, you didn't get that in Hamilton. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you did get beautiful waterfalls in Hamilton. You know what? It's funny. Everyone, most people say Hamilton is so dirty. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't understand. It has the most beautiful waterfalls. Yes, it does. In the world. And I lived, and, and it's funny, as a kid growing up, I never appreciated it until you move I went away? move away. And I'm like, uh, great. This is actually beautiful here. When wow. you go into, you know, into Dundas and you go into the, the valley in Dundas and it's like, but it's the same thing, you know, driving across Canada where... You know, you know of the the Moraine Lakes and the Lake Louises of the world, but it's those little other smaller spots yep. that maybe don't make it into you know um, the Lonely Planet or or some travel guide, but where they go, hey, there's some amazing amazing little places that yep. you know if you if you weren't a local, you wouldn't know about. And oh, like it, growing up, I, I grew up in Ancaster, just outside of Hamilton, mm -hmm. and 
uh, there's the old mill and just down past the old mill restaurant is this beautiful wall falls there and nobody knows about it nobody goes there yeah right everyone goes uh, to like niagara falls or or you know to webster's yep. falls and dundas but this falls just down the street and people would drive by it all the time and never know it was there no and it was like the first place i ever got my very first kiss was there at those waterfalls and for me it's just <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah yeah and, well, and I, so yeah I, one of the nice things about that whole area is one is you got the niagara escarpment and there's waterfalls yeah. like almost every 100 foot along that yeah. puppy and that thing's huge that goes all the way down to niagara from bruce trail and then just up the street you've got that bruce peninsula national park national park i think yeah bruce peninsula yeah. Bruce, bruce trail that thing is miraculously gorgeous yeah right so yeah we, we're very fortunate in this country where we have and like and i think you hit it on on the nose is that if we just take the blinders off, all of us live in a beautiful area and put a yeah. 200 kilometer circle around where you live and explore it. And you'd be amazed what you're finding. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. We've always promoted get off the beaten path and take the low mm -hmm. road, yep. less traveled. I mean, yeah. And, that, and that's experiment like, and adventure. And that's one of the yeah. things where, you know, all of these, uh, high end, uh, uh travel magazines they're pointing everyone to the same spot and that's why we have yeah. over tourism that's why yeah. we, we were mm -hmm. funneling them in to a one mm -hmm. location and that's why we deal with over tourism yeah right so anyways you describe yourself as a community cultivator and a den mother and i had to ask that an executive <laughs> coach to entrepreneurs our question is this as yeah. an executive coach to entrepreneurs what do you hope if you were to, to, to narrow it down, Matt, what would you hope at Trompners? What are the, what's the big takeaway when they're working with you? Uh, the biggest one, and, and this it's not just for like entrepreneurs, but I think it, I've, I've worked a lot with tech entrepreneurs, and you know they they have a bit of a reputation that sometimes gets well earned. Um, but this applies to anybody in any industry, whether it's healthcare or banking or retail. It doesn't matter. I see this all the time with leaders. Is uh, a lack of humility and appreciation. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the things in my coaching practice, I always push with any any entrepreneur, that's so why I like to think of myself as a bit of a den mother, is sometimes people need some fierce feedback. Oh, and good. the mm -hmm. openness mm -hmm. to receive feedback is a gift. And I, you know, when I look at whether it's a tech companies or any companies that really have failed to pivot or yeah. have failed to really adapt to the changing needs of, of whatever it is that their customer base has changed is this ability to really uh, be humble and, and learn to be appreciative and and to listen and i think those are are key things that when you look at those companies um and those entrepreneurs who are able to succeed that humility i think is a quality that often gets mislooked they always talk about grind and hard work yes you can grind and get hard work but guess what that's not always going to win the day especially long term mm -hmm. i think you hit it on the nose there yeah you know it i mean you this know it go egos ahead Junior. and uh, that yeah. sort of thing have a little bit too uh people just don't uh listen exactly yeah maybe in a two maybe people lose sight of how they got there because no one does it by themselves yeah and that's another mm -hmm. thing too and you'll see this in in with not just entrepreneurs again but a lot of folks but especially in entrepreneurs is you know they, they're brilliant individuals who obviously had a great idea mm -hmm. that at one point really hit but they needed operations they needed all these other key pieces in order for them to be successful and it wasn't just them and that lack of appreciation of that lack of ability to really listen and understand that you know the village that comes together to really support the, those individuals that if you lose that then you you get into you know where you're not going to be as successful or um not necessarily sustainable either yeah no very valid points a eh, junior oh yes that uh i mean same thing with like you say the village um analogy same yeah. thing with bring up a child i mean you need a village yeah. to bring up a child and same thing they bring up a business i guess that's a different type of child bring up a brother bring up a brother <laughs> yeah well, we're fortunate to have i mean i'm very fortunate mm -hmm. to have my big brother below me now yeah to, uh <laughs> you know to keep each other yeah. straight i mean being brothers where we have no problem with attacking each other's 
you know, when they do something wrong and uh, we try not to let the Eagles and the, the. We're also each other's biggest fan too. Yes. That's yes, awesome. Sure. That's important. All right. All I mean, right. It's uh, huge. Yeah. I so do it without him and he couldn't do it without me or maybe he could. No, <laughs> I wouldn't have a chance, man. <laughs> so COVID has devastated local economies and for, uh, we're just going on our 50th show next week. So a lot of our Ooh. guests we've had, uh, very, very, very knowledgeable strategists, futurists, professors, uh, bearded leaders. Um, they're, they're all bringing a ton of insight to the program. Uh, yeah. We get a lot of positive feedback from uh, the people who view it in a, tomorrow when it goes on, on throughout all our social media or tonight. One of the things, though, even though uh, COVID has pretty much devastated many small communities, and we really noticed this on our road trip to the Yukon, oh, yeah. is uh, – how can your services, uh, Matt, bearded wise one, how can your services and skill sets assist an industry like tourism? Oh, that's a great, great question. Um, if I can just share the quickest of quickest stories. Yes, please. Is the ability to understand and to pivot, right? Uh, I, the, I, the analogy I always like to use when I was fishing with my dad was, you know, if no one's biting right now, maybe now isn't the time one to fish. Or maybe we need to go to a different part of the lake and maybe try something else. Maybe try a different lure, try something a different bait, right? Yep. We need to do something different. We have to be able to pivot. And I had this wonderful opportunity to go. Um, TODA, the Thompson Tourism Association, uh, is doing this wonderful program now um, to help retrain. They brought in uh, a beautiful professor, Sean, who is an entrepreneur professor from UVic and Royal Roads University. But he's been working with these uh, entrepreneurs in the tourism industry who need to pivot. And there was this beautiful one young gentleman who um, was like, yeah, I need to do something different, right? Because he probably isn't gonna be able to go back to what he was doing. He was also someone who um, is differently abled. So he, I don't wanna say disabled because I know that's probably not the right word to use, but for lack of a better use of a word, he was disabled, but he was building out now where to get resources that talk around, um, you know, touring around Canada, from someone from that perspective, because I mean, I'm an able-bodied, cisgendered white male, so I'm gonna look at things from my viewpoint. Yep. And most of the stuff, unfortunately, is gonna be written in my viewpoint and my voice. So for someone like him, where it is a different viewpoint, he's gonna look at things differently. Uh, and so I, I'm gonna wish him all the best of luck, but what I love about it is he didn't just sit back and go, woe is me. He goes, okay, now what? Well, I'm gonna have to do something different. What do I know? Well, I know when I go to the wineries in Kelowna that they're not built for someone in a wheelchair. Yeah, <laughs> They're not built for someone who's blind. And I'm like, you're right. I never think of someone who's visually impaired probably still wants to get out into nature and enjoy this beautiful country. They're gonna have to do it yes. differently. Mm -hmm. But how can we enable and put systems in place that are going to empower someone who is differently abled than mm -hmm. me uh, to be able to get out and enjoy this beautiful country as well. So kudos to him for looking at a need and he was like, nobody's doing it. No. Nope. And he's stepping up to the plate and, and I'm going to wish him the best of luck because that to me is the right mindset uh, to be successful in this ever changing world where every morning I'm like, okay, so now what, what, what are we going to do? Well, yep. we can make excuses and we can complain about it or we can take that mindset and go, yes, that's happened, but yes. here's what we're going to do. Exactly. Let's pivot, right? Yeah. And that's for me where, what I did. I, I looked at it and I said, oh, I can sit here and eat ketchup flavored Doritos for the rest of my <laughs> life and, and just watch TV. Or you know what? I can do, I'm going to be around here for maybe a bit longer. Well, I'm in extra time. Yep. Let, let's make the most use of this overtime that I'm, I'm playing right now. Yeah, exactly. Enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Enjoy it. Explore, yeah. explore, adventure, meet new people, challenge yeah. yourself, all of that good stuff. I, I agree. So if you were to, uh, if you were to uh, say you were to meet this gentleman that you use that has pivoted and has come up with a new, uh, his new niche in tourism, what advice would you give him uh, moving forward? Ah, is to listen, reach out to as many people as possible. I see this all the time where people think they have a great idea and you know what, it probably is a great idea. But what we know, and I'm especially working with tech entrepreneurs for so many years now, is you need to validate, validate, validate. It may make the most sense to you, but if nobody's willing to buy it, if no one's willing, if it, it's not an idea that anyone else buys into yet, yeah. then maybe, maybe we need to pivot or we need to adjust or 
we need to look at how else we can support that that industry but i think that ability to really understand um who your customer is and to listen that would be the biggest advice i would give them because oftentimes people are like i have this great idea and i'm gonna run mm -hmm. but then are you running in the right direction <laughs> Yeah, you know, and yeah. it's like, you know, it's not like you can get, you know, like I, I just think of, you know, traveling out, out in Kananaskis or in Banff and, you know, I'd always have a map. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to follow the map. Entrepreneurs, guess what? You don't get the luxury of having a map when you are disrupting an industry or you are creating something rent new. So without that map, you know what, you're going to have to listen to the sound of the creek or listen to, you know, what's happening in, in the environment around you to be able to successfully navigate. So I hate to use that analogy of hiking, but you know, it's hiking without a map. And that's what all entrepreneurs have to do. And, and it involves um, the use of all of the, all the senses to be able to do that successfully. Yep. And uh, the circle of influence is like your search and rescue team. Yeah, right. Yes. Right. Right. Uh, our friend Camacho is in from Peru. Hello, Camacho, Hello. Carrie, and Tanya. Our regular viewers are also tuning in. And I know based on history, there's about 400 of you out there that are just zipping it up and enjoying the show. And that's just how we like it because me, Colin, and our bearded leader here, we've got plenty to say and we have no problem talking. Right, Junior? <laughs> oh, we'll go on forever there if we, uh, yes. they let us for sure. So guess what? You know how we have our little mantras and our little uh, Canadianisms calling, and we love we love throwing people off with uh, you know photologists and birdologists and all our makeup Canadianisms because I think it's fun and I don't care what people think. And uh, this is one of the things that our friend here, Matt, his mantra is yes and. And the other one that I found when I was looking through all his wonderful information was no excuses. Now what? has been a lesson he has developed over 20 years. No excuses. Now what? I mean, mm -hmm. isn't that a beautiful four words, really, to sum everything up, right? <laughs> so maybe, Matt, explain to us this 20-year research on uh, the yes <laughs> and no excuses, now what mantra. I love, well, I had the great pleasure of starting my career in healthcare. And it's funny now that we're dealing with a pandemic, because back in 03, I was on the front lines at Sunnybrook Hospital in Toronto, uh, when SARS hit, um, okay. or COVID-02, oh. I guess, right? Yeah. And, you know, there there's folks that were in the ICU, nurses that I had worked with, and, you know, they kept saying, okay, well, now what, right? And they didn't, unfortunately, make it. And, and it was such a lesson learned because we really had to go, okay, so now what? We, we can't sit here and just be like, okay, this is a horrible situation. We had to do something, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and you know, compare that to now, it's it's exponentially worse uh but it, it it really hit home because i i then went on to go work in many different industries i worked on the vancouver olympics and hopefully we did canada proud and touch the soul of a nation but i think of you know the opening ceremonies if you remember the opening ceremonies we had a oh crap moment when uh you know katrina lemay Doan, one of our gold medalists was went to go light the cauldron and what happened yeah. Her arm didn't come up, right? And we, yeah. put, and, you know, mind you, there was some swearing going on in the back of the scenes uh -huh. when we were, when <laughs> we were doing that. But at the end of the day, what did we do? As, as true Canadians, we made fun of it in the closing ceremonies, right? We're like, yeah. now what, right? So you can, you can always I have, love, and you always I will have that. stuff that will happen to you, yeah. right? And but at the end of the day, you, it's how you frame it. It will impact the behaviors and what you do after that happened, right? I also taught, you know, post-secondary for years, and I always would get a ton of excuses about their homework or ah. excuses, and, and that's where I was. I would just get sick and tired of it because I'm like, you're you're talking to someone with incurable cancer, like, yeah. I, I I'm not yeah. okay. So I don't care about the story. Now what? Yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do, yes. right? No, your dog ate your homework, right? Or, you know, <laughs> woe is me. Okay, so now what are you going to do about it? Because guess what? You're going to graduate in a year or six months. <laughs> You're going to be out in the real world, and no one's going to want to listen to your excuse. Nope. They're yeah. just going to want to know, okay, what are you going to do about it? What's happening yeah. now? Focus on that, and yeah. you're going to be super successful. If yeah. you stay mirrored in the, oh, woe is me, I've got incurable cancer, you're not going to go yeah. anywhere. Right. And everyone's going to have that moment where, what am I going to do? This is one of the worst things that could happen. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. yes, it probably is. It's a horrible thing. Now, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah.
I right? like it. And you got to like focus it. on that. So instead of just saying, well, this happened to me, say yes and. And I learned that from improv. So I got to got to work with a lot of fabulous actors. You know, people always say, Matt, go do improv. And I got to do some improv actually at Hamilton, at Theater Aquarius in Hamilton when, as a, when I was growing up and in, in going through high school. And the acting instructor always said, if you're on stage, things are going to happen. Set's going to fall down. Something's going to happen. And as an actor, you just have to say yes and. Yep. Because yep. you can't control the uncontrollable, but what you can't control is your reaction. So if yep. you're yes. on stage or in life, you have to say, yes, that happened, and here's what's going to happen next, right? And if you think of all the great improv actors and actresses, what do they do well? They do yes and, right? Mm -hmm. They just go with it, right? And yep. that lesson from improv works in any industry because you say yes and, what are we going to do about it? But if you have that mindset, and I think this is probably the biggest thing uh, for everyone right now is you have to check your mindset, check yourself and go, okay, now what? Yeah. And, yeah. and what are we going to do about it? Yeah. And just so you uh, anxious listeners know, if we lose connection, now what? Yeah. Right? <laughs> we'll have fun. Well, yes. Yeah. So yeah. we'll take us off on a song and dance afterwards exactly. until you come back. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He'll pull off his <laughs> singing in the shower scene or yeah. something. I don't know. The beautiful well, thing. Yep. Go ahead, Junior. I was going to go in my experience, our experience, that makes it a more memorable when things go wrong. It, yeah. I mean, it makes it more memorable. It makes especially how you react to it, like you're saying. Like especially yeah. like our adventures on the on the on the road yeah. when you have things that go wrong you get a flat tire or you know deer runs out or out. something transmission yeah. falls out transmission falls out or something those are the ones you remember yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and and the thing is is and I, I and again matt you can tell us a bit better because this is your your wheelhouse but i always find when you look back on these instances where you thought your world was falling apart mm -hmm. it wasn't that bad and actually right? what came out what actually came out of it are some pretty cool things that you did not see coming it might have came up six months later it might have came eight months later but it was a result of a decision you made back then i mean there's always a good in everything you just gotta you just gotta you gotta focus on that it's funny can i share a quick story oh you could do what okay. it's your show so, buddy long Here's story. The thing. so uh, but it's just a quick but talking about the ted stories and funny enough because i got the picture and that's what triggered me when i looked at it so when i got the call to go hey you're gonna get down uh we're gonna fly you out to to this university in south carolina and give a ted talk i'm so excited so the day comes where i'm gonna get on the plane and of course there's a massive snowstorm in new york city what that okay. meant was all the flights to Kelowna were canceled right yep. and so i got rerouted and i was supposed to go uh Kelowna to calgary i ended up going Kelowna to vancouver for some reason and then yep. as we get to vancouver they decided that oh the plane the engine needs to have to be fixed and we need to drain the all the <laughs> gas and i'm like i have a short time i somehow yep. i'm going the opposite direction from the east coast and now i'm in yep. vancouver and then i got rerouted to chicago and it's 1 a.m. the night before. And I'm like, am I going to make it down to South Carolina? Because I'm wow. trying to find flights and everything. But you know what happened? When sitting in the airport in Vancouver, I'm like, well, there's nothing I can do about this. I yep. ended up befriending half, <laughs> half the people in the terminal, got to <laughs> hang out with the, the flight attendants. And I actually ended up giving that TED Talk at in Vancouver airport <laughs> at the gate. <laughs> No way. And it was awesome. It was so no it was such an amazing experience. And at the end of the day, you know what? I ended up making it to South Carolina with a few hours to spare. And it was a great experience. But you know, I could have sat there and fretted. Or I was like, you know what? Why not make a great experience? And not only did I make some great friends down in South Carolina and had grits for the first time, yep. I got to meet some amazing people yeah. at both Vancouver and in Chicago airport. And even the ladies at the Chicago, they were like, you know, 1 a.m. They're like, why are you so happy? And they're like, oh, you're Canadian. <laughs> I'm like, but you know what? I'm having the time of my life. I don't care. I, hopefully I make it there. If I don't, you know what? This was a fun journey yeah. and I'm just going to enjoy it. But I, I got to travel to all these different airports that I wasn't initially booked on, but it didn't matter yeah. because yeah. you know, I, I was just going to enjoy the time that I was, I, I had exactly. and, yeah, and I ended up making some great friends that I'm now friends with on Facebook. And yeah. where did I meet them? 
yeah. at a terminal because I was rerouted to the wrong airport. And yep. you know what? We just had a great story and great laughs yep. uh, to share. Right. That's a perfect example of something where, and, and look at, look at, we're on this show and you're bringing it up. There's a situation yeah. that a lot of people are stressed out about, but now it's turned into a great sh story to share on a show like this yeah. from something that was, a lot of people would not handle properly. And then now we've got a story that we're all bragging about. I mean, that's right. beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. You yeah. just can't predict life. Yeah, exactly. I mean, right? whether it's yeah. an hour or a day or a week, I mean, just you just gotta. I mean, the I I believe the universe is gonna bring to you what you know. You have to have your eyes open to see what's happening and yeah, take advantage of the opportunities and and just go with the flow. I'm Carp DM you, I, was it that <laughs> our last week's fabulous guest was? I said? guess so. I don't know. You're very philosophical. <laughs> You're very philosophical tonight, see. Colin. Oh, they, well, Matt's inspiring. Oh, there you go. There you go, Matt. Look at the effect you're having. On I, the love it. I love it. I love it. It's all in the attitude. And... That's it. Yeah. Hey, so Matt, you went from uh, a coaching practice in Canada's financial capital uh, district in Ontario, if I'm correct, right? Mm -hmm. And then you decided, okay, time for a change. You packed up and you came over to the West. And now you're an executive director of the Okanagan Society of Independent Filmmakers. I love this. O-S-I-F for all of you people who love code. Um, maybe I really like our viewers to know a lot more, but we can tease them a bit. And then they could come on your web, on your on all your feeds that we've been sharing, your email, and they can ask you questions there. And please, people, write these sure, down. Yeah. We've been sharing them crazy. Tell us a little bit about the Okanagan Society of Independent Filmmakers. Well, yeah, so OSIF is it just, it, it's an amazing society, but it's um, its focus is how do we support, incubate um, local filmmakers? The film industry, and this goes for any industry, and not just the Okanagan, but any smaller community that's close to bigger communities like Vancouver and Calgary and Edmonton and Toronto, you know, where the bulk of a lot of work happens, is you get brain drained, right? So we have all these beautiful people who, you know, were born and raised in the Okanagan or came here, and, you know, they they got the 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 great opportunity to work in, in on some major films and then what ends up happening is all the work if you really want to get paid is in vancouver or it's in winnipeg or, or calgary or you gotta go to toronto or la yeah. and so for years um the okanagan would get some wonderful films like nick cage would come up and he would do a, a film here or you know there'd be some but then there'd be no work for eight months of the year right and so my husband he was working in the film industry and it was great but then if he really wanted to be successful he would have had to have gone back to vancouver and uh, yeah. we, we might we might have to go back to vancouver so um osif was put out a call for an executive director and i was like you know what i, I want to help build something here build more community especially around the digital storytelling the filmmaking community mm -hmm. and, and now we've and so it's really the groundswell has built up and now we're of course seeing more opportunities here in the Okanagan with films coming in but it's not just the big budget films where we're going to see the success and where we are seeing the best success is these when I call them smaller players people who aren't on the big budget films but mm -hmm. they are creating magic I love it. In their little smaller budget films. And it's excellent. It's brilliant. We have some amazing, talented individuals, but we had to help incubate and support and create a supportive community that could help them develop mm -hmm. and to the point now where we have filmmakers that are not only born and raised here, but can film here and get their films shown all over the world at different film festivals. And that is what we're that's really the impetus for what we're trying to do and yeah. and to bring this community together i myself don't even have a film background mm -hmm. but it was this ability to bring community together so after working you know in the olympics and the pan am games it's it's it takes a village uh a large village i mean it was what fifty six thousand <laughs> people that we wow. needed as, as an army to put on the vancouver olympics and we were the smallest <laughs> in terms of size and budget yeah. but we it was a lot it was a lot of people uh to be able to do that and it's not one person or one team it, it's a lot of folks and it's the same thing for any industry um and so i do a lot of work with the economic commission here in in the okanagan uh okanagan on professionals where let's not lose the talent yes. that we have here to the bigger cities 
let's develop and, and incubate uh, an ecosystem that can really support them so they don't have to go to a bigger city and of course now covid is one of the beauty thing beautiful things about this is now people can actually come here because they don't have to go to an office to work anymore so that is that completely disrupted everything we just have to pivot yeah we do right and and we and and really how do we support when i think of these young and maybe not so young because i've got a little gray in my beard how do we support each other so that we can uh, do beautiful things where we are so whether that's here or whether that's in regina or in hamilton mm -hmm. can we take these models of community support to really incubate um some beautiful yep. beautiful opportunity for storytellers so i think of our, our first nations community how can we support so that we they can tell their stories from their perspectives and it's not yes. me coming in to tell their story yep. but it's them telling their story from their perspectives or the LGBT community or the black community, what can we do that really empowers? And so the storytellers are, are the individuals who are truly have the great stories to tell. And if we can do that, OSIF is going to be success. And we're seeing um, similar societies all throughout Canada now that are just doing a brilliant job of incubating talent so that stays local and it can tell that local story. And I think that is just so, so powerful. Yep. And uh, the film industry is a big part of the tourism industry. It creates a ton of money for communities. It creates a lot of jobs. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't think people fully understand how much importance it is to make Canadian product, film Canadian product, and have Canadian people make that Canadian product. Just yeah. like our friend here, Studio Developers too. Yes, small budget films need a lot of people working together really well so kudos yeah. to you studio developer obviously yes. works in the uh the small film industry and all the power to you and if there's anything the crazy connect brothers of tourism can do to help that <laughs> film industry you know how to get a hold of us mr matt stewart and you know yeah. we'll, be, we'll be in like flint because that's what we do we're flint inners <laughs> right call i love it <laughs> another new word yep. yeah I we're 100 in there you we're get always... a lot of that on this show I yeah. love it, right. and it's good to see the the sporting the little guy. I mean, that's it, it. There's so much creativity out there. That's a lot of the industry now seems mm -hmm. to be, mm -hmm. you know, corporate and poster child. Or you don't get the creativity that you do yep. from the. And the look small... at all the look at all the indie films winning awards now, where they yeah. didn't right. have a chance before, yeah. and now they're starting yeah. to figure yeah. out. Hey, man, these small could these small studios, these small film productions with this local talent, they're banging it out of the park. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't want to see Ghost, Ghostbusters number five. I want to see, you know, right. the yeah. real people, which <laughs> yep. surprisingly is similar yeah. to what, what we do in a way that, you know, yep. we get the, the, the local community to tell their story. Yeah. Yeah. And our uh, friend here, Studio Developers, is viewing from California. How oh, are you awesome. in beautiful California? Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, I hope <laughs> we're not too Canadian for you, but if we are, uh, <laughs> you're going to have to stick with it because that's what we do here. So, yeah. Matt. What would you like to see as a positive change in tourism and the society due to COVID-19? What are, what are the little flies on the wall telling you and uh, how are you breaking it all down and where are you seeing, uh, if any, and I know there is, uh, positive change? Oh, I think right now is, in terms of positive change, how many people I speak to that are now reevaluating what's important to them? Yeah. right and and to me if, if unfortunately if i had to take something crazy like this for a reset to happen it, it's it's sad that that happened but at the end of the day it, it's really reevaluating what's important like for me it took an incurable diagnosis of cancer to really go okay do i really want to go and sit down on bay street working with billion dollar deals that at the end of the day what's the actual impact that i'm having to the community I'm serving, right? So, mm -hmm. and and I'm seeing more and more people, um, and I think coming out of this now, we're gonna appreciate those little smaller things. I never thought in my wildest dreams, I'd sit here and go, I really can't wait to the day I can just go hang out with some friends. We'll just have a beer in the patio. And like that, why is that something that is, it, but like before this, I took that for granted. I took uh -huh. game yes. night for granted. Yes. You know what I miss? Simple things like, you know, let's have a, a, you know, RuPaul's Drag Race and we're gonna all get together and watch the final episode together. Things that we never were able to do before, you know, where we, we just took for granted before, now it's harder to do. And yeah. so when things do happen, 
I hope we never lose that appreciation in that, in, you know, appreciative inquiry for what, what we're able to do and, and finding ways that we can still stay, you know, creatively connected. I, I think that I'm really, really encouraged to see ways um, that people are able to do that. Um, so again, one of the beautiful things that OSIP did um, is really help um, support um, the local hospices and be able to connect via video for those people who needed to say their final goodbyes, but couldn't get people to come in because of COVID, right? So yeah. there's, there's yeah, ways huge. that we could make an impact on people's lives that we never would have connected that this was a need, right? And I think that this is now, I think really forced so many people not only to be more appreciative, but also to go, okay, there's different needs now that we can solve for. Yep. Let's, and I think people are gonna be far more open to, yep. okay, let's just go and solve these needs quicker and faster. And we're gonna have to adapt, right? Yep. So. Yeah, I, one of the guests, Colin, I, I don't know if it was Jed at uh, Low Season in the UK, he was saying one of the things that he's really impressed about, and I, I think, Matt, you're, you're, you're touching on this as well, is that it's it, the entrepreneurial mindset is really coming to the forefront right now, opposed mm -hmm. to the corporate mindset, which has sort of yeah. gone into a shell, like ghost. They've gone ghost, and now you're seeing yeah. all these entrepreneurs come out Mm -hmm. With all of these big, big, big risks, and big ideas, and and big things, and big yeah. concepts, and yeah. it's beautiful. It's beautiful yeah. to watch this innovation and the initiatives that's happening right now. And the, yeah. the change that takes place in the actual entrepreneur too, to see them change their lives and and mm -hmm. towards a direction where they mm -hmm. their passion brings them, as opposed to the direction that the paycheck brought them earlier. Yep. Right. Yeah. Well, perfect example. So here in West Kelowna, there's this beautiful little pizza place that, you know, they, would, they wouldn't have, have any income coming in. You know what okay. they did? Uh, they have a patio, which, okay, maybe gets two or three people on there. They went and they're like, we're going to innovate. And they built at the side of their, their patio, a drive-through window. <laughs> so you literally have this drive through pizza place. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh -huh. I think McDonald's had that back in, you know, in the 90s, right? Yeah. But like, where would you go through drive through pizza? But they, they're, they're, they're trying different things. They're open to, to trying. And, and that's what I think any entrepreneur, especially in the tourism, is going to have to do, yeah. right? To stay relevant and, and look at what do I need to do to uh, not only to be, to be relevant, but to thrive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The old uh, cliche of thinking out of the box. Yeah. Yep. Let's crush uh, that box. It doesn't exist anymore. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Get those walls down, man. Let's go yeah. for it. Let's go yeah. for it. This is a good yeah. opportunity to experiment. Um, mm -hmm. what I, I read in an article and, uh, I've read a lot of, it's, it, I, that's the good thing about this show is I get to read about all these fascinating people and I get to follow and read their websites page to page and I get to find news articles and I find out all this beautiful information and I get to re-bring it up to the surface. If it was an article six months ago, I get to re-bring it like Mr. Top 40 of 40 sitting here, mm -hmm. Mr. Matt Stewart. Um, we've got a lot of that. So I read this article. And in the article, and I and I think it was the the Kelowna Now one. I think it was. Uh, you said you believe the Okanagan Valley is primed to become a big digital storytelling hub. So my question, Matt, why do you believe this? For one, and what do you mean by storytelling hub? Because that's a that's a big yeah. big thing. Well, I think it, now more than ever, local and the stories of local matter, right? And the pre. COVID, it was always, you know, we looked at the national story or, you know, being in a smaller community like the Okanagan, what did we hear? We only heard about what was happening in the major metropolitan cities, New York, Toronto, LA. Um, but now people really are craving for what is those local stories? And what I love about what we've done at, with OSIF is that this ability to enable that young individual who wants to tell the story of what's happening in their community, and they can do it bigger and better than the CBC and global, right? They can do it bigger and better than others yes. because they're, they're, they're doing different things and they're taking more risks. Mm -hmm. And so I think if we incubate that mindset, yeah. which we've been doing really well, and I think the Okanagan kind of works well because it's kind of like that Silicon Valley-esque mindset that if you apply what the, they did in the tech industry to a film industry or to a 
storytelling because people think of film as it's just you know you got to go to the movie theater well you can't even go to the movie theater now yeah yeah <laughs> so how are you telling stories and now how many people are viewing their stories on these devices right and they're adapting them they're they're 10 seconds or less or 30 seconds or less doing on their TikTok and their insta reels and all these things that the kids are doing but they're able to tell cohesive stories that mm -hmm. we, we never saw before so you, could you imagine individuals across this country telling the story of their local spot that nobody knows about right or, or telling the story of that, you know, crazy Fred who, you know, all the locals know, but he has probably the best backstory in the world. But CBC isn't going to pick that up. Nope. Right? They're not, not going to be gonna, picked up in the Globe and Mail. But they're not going to touch gonna, it. But these individuals who've got the ability to edit and create something beautiful in the palm of their hand, yep. mm -hmm. completely democratized the whole ability to be able to tell a story. Yep. We we ran a couple of film festivals, um, even during COVID, we ran these film festivals and it was, you had to film it on your phone. And it'd be filmed and edited it. on your phone. And the film, and they were short, under five minutes, but they were, nice. they were, they were fun. Some were cheesy, some were yeah. hot, like it was, but the gist was, they were just, my cake say kids, they were under 40 and using what was in their hands, devices, and we gave them 48 hours and they were able to produce some of the best content I thought I've ever seen, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and so that's when I say, you know, Storytelling Hub is, it doesn't have to be a big budget film anymore. Yeah. You can do some amazing storytelling with just what any kid is gonna have. Yep, mm -hmm. and, and I think the, the real beautiful thing, and I know from our industry, uh, tourism has taken a big uh, a mindset, a mindset or a mind shift, and they've gone from what used to be very fact and factual. It's this trail's three kilometers long. It has a washroom at the parking lot. You can park 20. There's a northeast trailhead, southeast. Mm -hmm. Now what's happening is statistics and white papers and our circle of influence of people are basically saying right now the only thing that people care about are stories and experiences and they don't want to hear the facts and figures the dry version they want to hear about you stubbing your toe and they want to hear how you sat on the bench on the peak and took some beautiful pictures and you had yeah. your gatorade and you took out your subway sandwich and you enjoyed <laughs> a breakfast with your or a lunch with your that's what they want to hear and yeah. uh i agree with you i think storytelling and um, it sounds like, and from what I see, uh, there's a whack of talent for you to work with. We just got to try and tap into it and find it. Exactly. Right. And make people know that it's possible. I think that's yep. a big part of what folks in my generation need to do is really say there, there's so much that, you know, we don't have to do this nine to five gig thing anymore where yep. we go and work there for 40 years and then retire where you can create and craft your own future right Isn't and if we can empower them to, to think like that and, mm -hmm. and then they're gonna do it like to me that it, it, we, we've completely changed yeah. uh, a, a whole segment uh, in how people are gonna grow up and, and make an impact in the world exactly so Matt before we let you go yeah uh, is there anything else you would like to bring up and I have a pretty good idea what it is and I can't wait to hear but if okay. something you want to share with our audience for sure yeah go, um, you know, one of the things we're doing right now, uh, as I've also, I mean, all the different things I'm doing is I've joined Vancouver 2030. So if you go to Vancouver2030.org, you can sort of see, get a sense. We want to bring uh, the Olympics back to Canada. Uh, I was a big part um, in 2010. And to me, it was just beautiful to see when the country came together, we touched the soul of a nation. And it was, you know, it was like four years of hard work for me, but to accumulate in two weeks, of you know this beautiful opportunity you know being down to, if you anyone who saw the images of downtown vancouver uh you know especially when sydney got that goal and, and like to be there i've never been hugged by so many straight oh. men in my life it was so awesome yeah. like just yeah. seeing everyone go crazy it but was like, go it was just oh i was gonna say so we want to be able to tap into that again you know we, we think there's you know a lot of great cities out there that, that can host the olympics but Guess what? In Canada, we did we did some pretty awesome things. You know, when you think of like what we did in Montreal, which yes, we went, had overruns, but that was right after the Munich Olympics, and that was cr so crazy for those people who forget about that. In Calgary, yeah. uh, I'll never forget Calgary. You know, I was just a kid back then, and, and in Vancouver, we were able to do something special that brought people together. And yeah. you know, twenty years later, um, 
we'd love to be able to do that again. And I think it would be, we've got the venues, uh, we've got the people, uh, now it's just a matter of rinse and repeat. And so I'm working on, on the bid committee. So if anyone is interested, uh, go to Vancouver2030.org um, and you'll probably get an interview with me because uh, we, we, we're trying to build out a team now to put together a bid. Um, we're up against Salt Lake City, uh, Sapporo and Barcelona. But no I have a feeling, <laughs> Vancouver, we, we, we can do it. We can bring it back and right it'd be on. just so awesome. Anyway, that's, that's what I'm working on now. And I, uh, I can't wait to, uh, to unleash the hounds and let's get, get going yes. on this. And if there's we got anything, that address uh, to show there, bro. Yeah, it's on here. Uh, studio developer put it up for us, Vancouver2030.org. Awesome. Thank you. It, if yeah, anyone excellent. needs it, it's in the chat there and, uh, we'll make sure, uh, we slap it up there on uh, the versions that we put out tomorrow or tomorrow. So uh, I got to tell you, Matt, it's been very enjoyable. So awesome. I, I had a really I can't good believe time. It's over already. I yeah. know. <laughs> I know. It's like, is this a 10 minute show? Yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> I, well, that's the beauty about mm -hmm. having this show is it's a great hour of conversation that feels yeah. like 10 minutes. Yeah. And Matt's been an awesome guest. I mean, it's, it's yep. an honor to have you here, Matt. Oh, it was an honor to be on the show. I really just so honored that you had me here thank you for everyone who's listening and i hope we continue this conversation and uh yep. i'm looking forward to watching your shows in the future too excellent gotcha. and you know awesome. uh drop us a line there buddy if uh you see any opportunity for us to uh, sneak in and oh, help you yes out. yes most we'll definitely okay awesome all right thank you Matt. take care Big cheers. bye everyone bye. <laughs> So that was wow. Mr. Matt Stewart, the bearded one, the unbewhiskered leader of entrepreneurship and also part of the Vancouver2030.org bid. And we want to make sure we get up that there because that is close to uh, uh, Matt Stewart's heart, that little project call. I got to say, Matt is all around uh, good people there. I like the dude. I like the dude, yeah. you know. I, yeah. might have, I might even grow a beard. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep, no, yep, it was yep. awesome to have him on the show, yep. and um, this Vancouver Olympic stuff seems. Uh, I know, seems and I'm good. bringing them back up. Uh oh. Yeah, encore performance. Yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> what did What did you have to say, Matt? You got to go, right, buddy? I got to run. Guess where I'm going to run? I got to. We got a meeting uh, okay. with the Vancouver 2030 team. So I just wanted to again say thank you so much. It was a blessing to be on your show, and definitely we'll connect again. Awesome. You know, buddy. Good luck at your right. meeting. Big cheers. Have fun. You are, my friend. Okay. All right. Bye bye. So that was again Matt Stewart. And again, we've been putting up his Twitter, his LinkedIn, his Facebook feeds. We've been putting up his email. Uh, if you would like to get a hold of Matt, we have put up everything you need to do to tag into our guest, uh, Mr. Bearded Leader, the wimps of the unbristled, the unbristled bald leader of beautifulness mr entrepreneur <laughs> matt stewart right and as matt Sounds likes to awesome. say as matt likes to say colin big cheers big cheers you right? betcha so thank you, you again betcha. to matt for coming on and again yes. look up his social media you can follow him on uh facebook lincoln and twitter mm -hmm. uh we would like to say junior and i uh thank you everybody for joining us tonight for our, all our live celebration of beards and brains with matt stewart discussing entrepreneurship small business and the tourism industry we are the mm. cobra of the a travel talk show greg and junior colin gerard better looking as ever the mm. brother Tourism, the Cobro founders of acanatravel.com and the brains of Braun behind the Acana Marketing Group. Please support us by following. Please, please, please support us by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, and social media page. And if you really want to uh, score some points then uh, and you want to talk to myself or Junior, uh, look us up on Lincoln. And uh, we're quite active there with our circle of influence. So thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Uh, we are very happy to have seen you here. You yes. can also connect with us anytime you want. Tomorrow, you'll find this interview with Matt on our live travel feed on our A Canada Travel website. You'll also see it at the end of the month on our award-winning blog. We encourage Canadians to reuse, recycle, rewatch this talk show every every Tuesday at 7 p.m. PST on your Facebook and YouTube channels. It is important to recycle good Canadian content. Yes, share. Uh, that's sure. what that's what we do we deliver right we so, deliver one final note 
we like to put a call out there that everyone be aware when tourism does open up that you look at where you're booking your accommodations and your tourism. 13 to 18 percent of every booking goes towards out of country into these big OTA companies, booking.com, hotel.com, Expedia. Be mm. aware that we are throwing 18% of our tourism dollars into another country, another head office, and it's not ever coming back to Canada. So here's what I encourage you to do. Book directly with Canadian tourism websites, Canadian business websites. If you need to find them, you book directly through us. You could get a hold of our participating businesses and go directly to their website. Here's a little tip. Prices are cheaper when you go to the actual website. Okay, so you're not <laughs> getting you're not getting no deal on booking.com. You're actually throwing away 18% that used to mm -hmm. fund your child's baseball team, used to help build the rink, it used to put a roof on the new adventure center. This is where that money has gone. So here's what we're insisting is book Canadian, book local, keep it within the country. We need every penny we can get to build this industry. Be smart and do mm -hmm. a little bit of time and book directly with their websites and if you need help you go to acantravel.com because that's what we do we direct you to their website because we know that's where you're going to pay a lot less mm -hmm. okay so our guest and, yep i was going to say i mean when you book direct i mean you get to meet the people you get to find out a bit about the place too it's not about you know it's not just about being quick and two seconds to book your trip i mean find out where you're going who you're staying with and uh Everybody's yep. better off. Cut you know out, cut out the uh, third party. You know it. You, you know, know it, it, bro. You know it. Keep the money in Canada. Yes. So, as Matt Stewart would say, be kind, stay safe, and stay creatively connected. Peace out, Canada. Okay, Junior. Dazzle Peace them. Out. Dazzle them with your brilliance about next week's show. Oh, next week's show, Big Five O coming up there, bro. And we have a special show for all of you. Uh, you get to, we get to interview each other. I guess we are. Uh, Woo, woo. talking about our our last year and how great it's been our great guests and um we want people to uh ask us the questions that they want to ask this is a big opportunity to ask us uh what's up and um we'll discuss our past year and celebrate the success also the email send your questions to us talk show at acantravel.com right call i'm in yeah for sure is that the only way you can send them through our Facebook page as well? Yep. You can send them any way you want. There you go. Talk show. Acanatravel.com. Peace out.